express a couple of concepts before we continue. In what moment in your car you start with problems of temperature in, in your car? In what situation you start with overheating? If you're leaking coolant. Excuse me? If you're leaking coolant. If you have a leak of coolant, that's correct. If you have a leak of, of a coolant, the problems start. Why? Well, I mean, you're, you're because the level of coolant decreased. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not necessary. No, vaporization no. because there's too much volume. It's because air entering the system. Oh, okay. Gotcha. In the area where you have a leak, air enters. And what happens with the air? Creates bubbles. And the, what happens with the bubbles at high temperature? They expand and produce vapor and ba 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 ba. Yeah? Look at this. If you don't have a leak, for example, your car in this moment is okay, no? If you have leaks of coolant, no. The temperature is exactly in the same point. Yeah. All the time, the temperature is over there. You see, periodically, it's over there. Because you don't have leaks. Yeah, everybody follow me? Okay. Oh, but the, the motor is too hot. The radiator is too hot, yes. But it's in the range of temperature before the coolant become vapor. In the moment that the coolant become vapor, what happened with the, the radiator cap here? What happened here with this? radiator cap. You have, bubbling. you have bubbles, uh, steam, vapor, yeah. and what happened with the hoses? Melt. Yeah. Expand Slow. and uh, ba, 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 ba. You have, you have millions of, uh, of uh, problems. Yeah? The problem is when the liquid, the coolant, pass from liquid to vapor. If the liquid is a little before of the boiling point, everything is perfect. Oh, it's too hot, but it's not vapor. In the moment that the liquid pass to vapor, rah, the hoses expand, the radiator explodes, the, the reservoir is, is boiling, you remember? It's because you have air. No, I don't have air, papi, look at this, it's boiling. You have air. Yes or not? Okay. This is one of the reasons why the people use coolant instead of fresh water. Fresh water is good, but uh, what is the main, main? There are a lot of difference in between coolant and fresh water. What, what is the number one difference in boiling between point? coolant, excuse me? The boiling point. The boiling point, the boiling point of uh, water is this, and the, water, uh, the boiling point of coolant is this. It's like a, in between three and uh, four, seven degrees higher than the water. What is the meaning of that? When you have coolant instead of uh, uh, fresh water in your car, in your engine, you have a more temperature, more range of temperature before the liquid becomes vapor. That's wonderful. And also, if the boiling point increase because the additives of the coolant, the freezing point goes down. You have more time to become ice. The range is higher. Only because the additives. Can I improve that, that boiling point and freezing point a little higher in my actual coolant that I have in my, in my, in my engine? Yeah. When you added more additives, SCA. Supplemental coolant additive. You remember yep. those SCAs? If you add it, the SCAs are coming in liquid or pills. If you added that liquid, you increase a little more and you decrease a little more the, the freezing point. That's good. And of course, you added lubricity, uh, other properties, anti scale, anti foaming, anti corrosion, anti. And, yeah? Talking about the uh, antifreeze. As far as like when you have like people gonna winterize their boats, they run oh. the, the whole system. Instead of using water, they use 
biodegradable antifreeze. So it pushes all the water out and whatever antifreeze stays in the in the block or in the lower unit will never it's freeze. It's not corroded. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's they part of the winterization. Do, they even do that for like the water systems or something. Yeah, everything. Right? So no. Even on the, like on the outboards. And for the air conditions. Yeah. yeah for on the outboards, we have a five gallon a jug with a hose with the a, with a muffs. Yeah. And we run the engines Correct. through that. Correct. Until it's used up. After five gallons, we shut it down. It goes into storage. And you can let the engine or the uh, uh, water maker or yeah. the air conditioning equipment for three years abandoned protected with the with the with the antifreeze yeah. with the coolant okay nice but it has to be a biodegradable energy don't use advanced yeah. auto no 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 that's that's yeah. the other top yeah you can raise that boiling point by pressure too can't you? ah correct this is an important thing okay you can increase the boiling point with those additives. But uh, pay attention to this. If you pressurize the coolant, you can increase the boiling point a little more. Per each PSI that you added in the system, each additional PSI, you increase the boiling point three, three degrees Fahrenheit. The other one is with the elevation. Right now oh. we are going to talk about that. Yes per each additional PSI that you added in the system, you increase radiator cap because this is the commercial name but is in this particular case in marine is expansion tank cap because this is the expansion tank okay all right all of them they have in the label the pressure normally is in between 7 and 14 psi the pressure of the of the caps the radiator caps okay pay attention suppose that you have the complaint of a, a customer, and the customer says, I have two Caterpillar engines running. They are running perfect. No smoke. My boat is nice. But the temperature in the starboard engine is like a five degrees higher than the port engine. Everything is okay. But uh, the temperature is a little higher. Yesterday, I checked the ground on the gauge. I replaced the gauge. The problem is not the gauge. Normally, in that, in that situation, I recommend to the customer, okay, what is the engine with lower temperature? Oh, that one, the port engine. Okay, in the port engine, let me check the, the cap. Oh, it's a 10 PSI. We are going to replace the cap for other one with one more PSI or two more PSI. New one, and right now the temperatures are equal. Yeah, you don't need only with with more pressure in the system. Everybody follow me? So why is that, that when you add more pressure, oh, yeah. you raise the boiling point? Yeah, of so. course, of course, because uh, you have a limitation of movement of particles. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's confined. Gotcha. It's confined. Yeah, pay attention. Suppose that uh, you, this is, this is uh, the dancing room, and you are dancing from this to this, what happened in five minutes? You are too? You're be, yeah, you're okay, be what happens if you are dancing with your wife here? <laughs> Slow. Yeah. You, you know? No, no, you're not going to overheat. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's basically because you don't have movement of particles. Gotcha. This is another good question. In other scenario, we talk about the microwave. What is the meaning of microwave? And why the microwave hit the, the food? How does that cap pressurize the system? Oh yeah, because it's basically a, a spring. You see ah. the spring? And a, and a gasket. Uh, it's according with the tension on the spring and the material of the spring. Yeah? In what moment you need to replace this cap? When you have? Steam. Steam, vapor, and uh, when the radiator is, when the cap <laughs> never, never close because the spring is completely you need to replace the cap. It's basically because the tension on the spring. 
Okay. So I want to go back to that scenario. So you had the one that's five degrees, and you changed the cap for a new, the same same PSI, no. or you no. went five PSI, five PSI. So if I went down five PSI. Excuse me, you want to increase the boiling well, remember point? Remember you told me the two cats, one's five degrees higher oh, oh than yeah. the other. Oh yeah, this engine is five degrees higher. Right. And this engine is lower. Right where it's from. Okay. I am going to replace in this engine the radiator cap for other one with one more PSI. To raise for, the pressure. To raise the temperature. Okay. For each additional PSI, I added three degrees Fahrenheit. Providing that it's, providing that the one that's running hotter is within the specs. Ah, of course, right. of course. The range for this engine, you remember, is Caterpillar is in between 170 and 210. You remember, uh, and uh, this engine is running at 190, 190, 190, 190. But this one is 185. I can raise this one, or normally you raise the other one because lower is difficult. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to understand. Why is that difficult? Because you're if you lower, if you buy a different For example, if you try, this is the engine with higher temperature. Yeah. If you try to replace that radiator cap for other one with less PSI, yeah. probably the temperature now decreases. Oh, really? Why? Because I don't know. Ask to him. Something. <laughs> yeah, it's some minor. Yeah, I know, I don't know. But no decrease. Yeah. In the opposite, yes. Uh -huh. How about elevation? Oh, the elevation. Good. Per each 1,000 feet in elevation, 1.25 degrees more or less? More. Oh, no, no, decrease. decrease. The boiling point decrease, decrease 1.25 psi. Because the For pressure. that reason, if you are the driver of a truck in Montana, you say, in my truck, I need to replace the radiator cap for other one with three additional psi to compensate that elevation. That's why it took me longer to boil my spaghetti when I was in Correct, was correct, crazy. correct. <laughs> Good, Roberto, welcome. Thank you. Okay. It is clear about the radiator cap? The radiator cap is uh, the, I, I say radiator cap, but it's critical, no? It's uh, the, the seal should be should be in good condition. If the seal don't seal properly, uh, you, have, you have vapor. So just one question on the design here. So when this, when this cap is in here, right? This, when it heats up, this, uh, spring is compressed. Oh, nice! And then the Look at extra this. food perfect, goes in the reservoir. Perfect. You have the reservoir here, connected here. That's correct. And uh, when the temperature reach the temperature of this metal, what happened with the spring? Uh, with the with, with this element. And and what happened with the liquid here? The liquid here enter. Oh, enter. Enters. Enter. Oh, goes For that the reason, in the reservoir, you have two marks. When the when the temperature is is uh, is um, uh, excuse me, you have one mark in the bottom and other one in, in top. When the engine is running is running running, what happened with the level of the of the refrigerant? Goes down, it goes down because suction. What happened when you stop the engine and the temperature of the engine try to stabilize with the ambient temperature? What happened with the liquid here? Goes up, right? Yeah, it's basically uh, the function of this. Oh, in a, in a, in my um, expansion expansion tank. No, expansion tank. No, reservoir tank. The liquid is always on top and never move it. Probably the spring of uh, this is extended all the time. It's not retracting. Yeah, you need to remove that one, clean or replace the radiator cap. So when when it's overheat, when the radiator is overheated, so the extend the extension tank. Be sure to bring more fluid Correct. to balance the overheat. Correct. That's Correct. Correct. But uh, remember, Roberto, if uh, if uh, if uh, the radiator is overheating and the hoses are too hot and you have vapor coming in, it's because uh, you need to stop the engine and verify where is the leak. Where is the leak of coolant? Because you have a leak. So this you could not install a sensor to shut it off, to shut off the engine to should nothing like doing the overheat. Okay, there are a lot of possibilities. Okay. Let, let me start with, with the with the troubleshooting for that situation. I have a steam here and uh, everything is too hot. You need to stop the engine, that's the number one. Stop the engine and let the engine two hours until the temperature is stabilized. Because you don't want to open it while it's hot. No, no, not yet. 
and after that, check for coolant leaks. Touch all the all the radiator hoses, all the hoses. Oh, I have a little here, a little here. Fix it, fix it. Replace the clamp, replace the hose, fix it again. Recover the refrigerant. The, the, the best thing to use we use once it cools down. You can put a dye yeah, in good. there and use an infrared like black light and you can actually find the traces. Yeah. So sometimes oh, it's hard. Really? It's hard yeah. to see, especially if it's in an engine apartment and you really and there's not enough yeah, light. Yeah. You use a special little flashlight and yeah. you can find the traces. The dye is important. Oh, that's it's good because the dye with yeah. the flashlight, oh look at the spot up there. Yeah, yeah, it's a special you never know, it's like right? a black light. Right? Even like it, the dye it, is it, Yeah, you just run it. it. And then you let it sit, and then you go yeah. and you look for it, and you'll find it. You do have to run the engine, though, right? Yes. You Correct. Okay. In marine it's, application, it's, it's important, my friends. You check the engine room, like Danny said. It's, thank you, Danny. That's perfect. But the other other important thing is check, check outside. Yeah. Check when the engine is running, if uh, it's going pure salt water or salt water with orange. That's cool. Huh? Or let me stop the engine for a couple of minutes, and I see that uh, greasy, this is coolant. Look at this, it's like an orange, it's like a green, uh, that's coolant. Remember, you're using your own tools, your eyes, ears, your smell. Your nose, you can smell coolant. Correct, you, you can smell. smell coolant. What's that dye called? Uh, no, it's a refrigerant it, dye. It's a refrigerant dye, yeah. Like you can get like in a, any auto In any auto parts. parts. Yeah, any auto parts. You added a little amount here, you put, the, put it back that one, you start the engine, you run the engine until the operational temperature. How you know if it's uh, at the operational temperature? Because both hoses, both hoses, both hoses, this and this, the temperature is similar. It indicating that the thermostat open. That, that's correct? Okay. And after that, you stop the engine, you check, with the with the flashlight, what? It's it's not a regular flashlight. It's a flash. No, it's a black. It's like a black light. Black light. Okay. It's a UV light. Yeah, no? UV light. UV yeah. light. It's for it's used in air conditioning. In the next class, uh, we are going to use and, that. And one. what is nice is it has like a long stem with a little light in it, so that way you can bend it and go in the oh, corners. Correct. The floor, yeah. Correct. It's nice because you can see and check outside. Outside is important, no? It's, it, you, you see if you have oil, if you have a, a fuel. Or, uh, or or coolant, like uh, Glenn said, use. Or it's not, it might not even be pump, pumping water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should always look outside. Okay. Uh, that's the number one for uh, for overheating. No leaks. If you have leaks, you have overheating. No, no, no other reason. It's basically you have a leak. No, I don't have a leak, puppy. You have a leak. If not, you don't have o o overheating. You have overheating is because you have a leak. Probably the leak is when the engine is running. It's going through the exhaust pipe. For that reason, the engine room is clean. Other, other situation is probably the leak is when the engine is running in the coolant pump. When the engine is off, it's not leaking. What is the meaning of that? We have a coolant pump here. Yeah. That one. That. Look at this. This is the coolant pump. Or circulating pump. This is other yeah, one. That's one this is another one. This is other one. Look at this. This is the coolant pump. The pulley is here. Yes or not? Yes. All the coolant pumps, automotive and marine, they have here in the bottom one hole. You see the hole? Yeah. You see that hole? Okay. When the chaff, the bearings, and the seals are broken or working improperly. You have lateral play here. When the engine is running, you have a constant leak of coolant over there. When the engine is off, no. Yeah, and that's a good indicator because if you see rust stains coming off of there, through that you definitely hole. know yeah. you got a leak. So this, sorry, go, no, no, you go. No, you'll see rust on the pulleys, Correct. the belt, the Correct. alternator. It gets, it gets thrown Correct. on the belt it's and because, it just gets... It's because that water is coming out and the centrifugal force of the pulley and the, the belt, belt splash that coolant over there. So the, the design reason for that, it's called a leak hole, I think, is if there is a leak that it doesn't go into the engine, that's why there's that hole there? Correct, correct. Some coolant pass through the chaff and drops uh -huh. here. Yeah. 
correct? Can I replace? Can I re repair that part, my no. friends? Not right. Replace. It's less expensive. Because yeah. all the other bearings. Oh, you are need gone. the hydraulic press to remove this. Yeah. Ah. <coughs> how, how much is the price of the pump? <coughs> Well, it's a boat, so it's got to be a thousand dollars. No, no, a couple hundred bucks. A uh, hundred and twenty dollars, hundred and forty. And uh, if you buy the bearing, the seal is eighty-five dollars. Yeah, it ain't worth it. Those are the, those are the things that you got to pick and choose your battles. What you want to really attack. Like, okay. you, like you tell me about your starter or your alternator. Yeah. No, Why actually, would you on my those? generator, that was the problem. The weep hole was dripping into the pan. And then in the sea state, the water splashed all over the stator and destroyed yeah. the whole generator just because I didn't take care of that. Be careful with the di diagnosis of this because, like he said, pay attention. When the engine is running, it's only when the engine is running, it's dripping. When the engine is off, nothing. Yep. That's why I missed it. <laughs> That's correct? All right? You like it? For that reason, in your car, you check the drive in your home, it's dry. But I have less coolant in the reservoir. But it's dry, I don't have leaks. It's because when you are driving the car, it's leaking. And when you stop, it's not leaking. It's the coolant pump. All right? And even, even if you run a pressure test, it's not gonna pick that up? That no, the pressure wrong. test is a good, is a good. Because uh, uh, that happened with my truck when I first bought it. It was overheating right off the lot, and I brought it back, and they're like, "Yeah, we don't see anything wrong with it." I'm like, "Well, it's overheating, so obviously Correct. something and is leaking." And what the pump? No. No. Well, they tried to tell me that the pressure test passed and everything, and I, I guess it was the pump because they fixed something eventually. But they tried to tell me that the pressure test yeah, passed. Yeah, probably passed because the pump is producing pressure, mm -hmm. but it's leaking because the seals are broken. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. For that reason, you need to be analytic. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, everybody follow me. Any other question about the, <clears throat> the coolant pump? Don't forget this. Don't forget, check, check for lateral play. Play, play. play. Especially if the engine is running, you can't <clears throat> miss it. It's gonna do this, yeah. it's shake. Too much tension on the bell, damage, damage those bearings. Oh, so if it's pulling too hard on the And on damage the, the bearings of yeah. the alternator. Yeah, no? you, when you tighten the belt, you don't wanna hit touch the bell and sound like an instrument. You want yeah, to no. like just enough that there's a little play with Normally tightness. you have one quarter, uh, quarter inch is the, the flexion. It's approximate. You can hear it too. All I right. made it too tight in the engine, like you can hear the bearing. Oh, yes. For that reason, it's, it's recommended periodically use the stethoscope and pass the stethoscope in front of the alternator, pull and pump, and verify the bearings. All right, guys? Okay. Yeah, I, I solved your question, Roberto? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. The coolant is critical. The coolant is critical. How in your car the coolant is cooled by the radiator in front and the fan and the flow of air? Yes or no? Pay attention. This is the symptom. The customer said, in my car, when I am driving my car in the expressway, the temperature is perfect. But uh, when I am driving my car in the traffic, with too much cars in the traffic, the temperature, yeah. The, the, what is the problem? The fan is not the fan, the fan. The fan start or stop in a short interval of time, or it's not, it's not running, it's off. Let me check, I start my car. The thermostat open and the fan continue off. Should be should be running, no? The, the temperature continue going up, 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 and the fan never start. What is the meaning of that? Okay. The fan is damaged. You need to verify if the problem is on the motor of the fan, or if the problem is on the relay of the fan, or if the problem is in the fuse. For remember, in your car you open the fuse box and you have one fuse for for radiator fan. Yeah, you need to identify what is the problem and solve the problem. Everybody follow me? Yeah. That's important. What happened in your boat? How you cool the coolant? By just uh, wall water going around. Correct. Yeah. What is the name of that element? Heat exchanger. 
is the heat exchanger. That is the heat exchanger. Let me explain that one. You see here, what is this? Exhaust. 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 Manifold. Manifold. The valves are on the head. Yes, those ports, those ports are aligned with the exhaust port of the head. No? This is the exhaust manifold. Look at this. Yeah. This is the exhaust manifold, you see? The gases enter in the exhaust manifold, and after that, the gases enter in the exhaust pipe and bye-bye. That's clear, my friends? Everybody follow us? Yes, sir. Okay, look at this. That's the situation. All right. And the gases go over there and bye-bye. The heat exchanger, look at the heat exchanger. This element is a heat exchanger exactly like this. Look at this. Salt water enter here, salt water continue over there, salt water enter in the exhaust pipe and bye-bye. Good, look. So, so there's like an internal wall in there that right separates now, those? Yeah, you have separated for that reason I oh. mark with the line. It's gotcha. separated. The gases, the gases don't touch the salt water. It's, it's exactly the same like if I cut it, this one on top and I put that one over there. So they only combine for that little elbow. Only here. Right. Only here. Only here. Thank you. Okay, look. I can replace that one for this one. And I put over there. Look, yeah. salt water, salt water, coolant, the coolant, bam, 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 and the coolant return. So like on that styrene? Correct. Separate, right? Exactly. Oh, uh, can I use that heat exchanger for... Uh, uh, hydraulic fluid, power steering fluid? Yes. 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 I introduce hydraulic fluid and the hydraulic fluid goes over there. Can I use that one for uh, uh, fuel? Yes. Yes. The fuel you enter, cool. yeah. yeah. You can use that heat exchanger for any type of fluid. Because the salt water only goes to the pipes. The salt water goes over there and continue. Only to the pipes because the pipes. Look. The coolant surrounded the pipes of salt water. The salt water entered over there, and the salt water continued. So is there, is there a coil? Let me explain. Okay. Let me explain. We are going to disassemble with Mr. Rodriguez here. We are going to disassemble a typical heat exchanger. So where's the return on that one? Yeah, let me explain it. All the heat exchangers, they have two cups. And in each cup, you have, what is this? The pencil sinks. What is the function of the sinks? To stop corrosion. Protect the metal of the housing, the metal of the heat exchanger. Okay, guys, so, look at this. Talk about like a crucified, crucified, um, sacrificial. Sacrificial, mm -hmm. sacrificial Thank anode. Thank you. Same thing. Sa Same thing. Sa sacrifice <laughs> sacrifice <laughs> you in the evening. <laughs> that. Would there ever be a problem if uh, the sinks were to break off in large chunks? Excuse me? Yeah, let me explain. Is it the opposite? <laughs> we remove the opposite cap. That's, that's uh, because, because Danny. That was my fault. <laughs> Blame the new guy. Uh, this is the service. Uh, in the boat, periodically you need to remove both caps remove the, the element and clean and flush. We are going to do this this procedure today in the in, in your engine. Okay, look at this guys. Look at this. Look at this. Roberto. Look. Salt water. Salt water. And look at this. Look at those baffles. Metallic baffles. The coolant the coolant, the coolant, the coolant, the coolant, the coolant, bye-bye. Ah, why the coolant don't touch the salt water? Because the salt water is passing through the pipes, pipes and the coolant surrounded those, those pipes. The coolant never touch, the coolant never touch. Where, where is it passing through the coolant? No, look, the, the salt water goes over there. Uh -huh. 
and the coolant it's on the outside yeah, they just oh it's outside. just on the outside yeah okay gotcha. outside gotcha. it's outside you like it yeah i was thinking it was way more complicated pay attention <laughs> i found it look 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 i found it in the cup and in the reservoir of my boat a lot of calcium white powder white powder when i remove the cup i found that white powder over there what is the meaning of that the salt water is mixed with the coolant oh, okay. oh let me check the reservoir it's like brown right now so you got a crack in there so you have a crack here in one pipe it's a little fracture yeah. and the salt water mix it with the coolant and enter the coolant with salt water in the system it, it could, could it also be that one of these o-rings yeah, is broken the o-rings broken oh. it's a problem here at least you know where to go yeah to check. and if it is a problem there would you be able to change that construction in the whole leadership yeah can I, can I send this element to the machine shop and they test it at high pressure? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But can, they can't fix if one of those pipes has a hole in it. In some, yeah. uh, in some, uh, in some uh, uh, shops, they fix it. As long as, as long as it's not the one in the middle. Yeah. That's yeah. Insane. Is that something, <laughs> is that ex an expensive Papi, uh, this, part? this is too expensive because it's yeah. nickel copper 9010. Gotcha. Look at this, this uh, heat changer, yeah. this heat changer. Uh, it's uh, $1,100, $1,200. Because think, the material. Come to think about it as well, it's also expensive because of the way that it's configuring it, right? It takes also. a lot to actually turn that thing to, uh, to have Delta Z in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. That, so that's why you say if you take the simple, the Correct. coolant, the coolant no. simple, you find a lot of nickel, that means that. Correct. If you found that high level of nickel, what is, what is the indication? That, this one that you good. have erosion in this metal. Uh, what other element can you find in the in the coolant sample uh, awesome. if this is bro broken? Awesome. Silver, because the welding, the soldering ah. is with silver. Mm. Lead, because the soldering. Uh, nickel, because the soldering, uh, because the metal. Uh, copper, of course, because it's copper nickel. And uh, and what other one? in the sample. So, so, uh, too much calcium is because it's mixed and too much sodium with salt water. Yeah. Too much borum, borum, borum. borum. You, you added excessive amount of additives. Yeah. Oh. Just borum. Just want to get this straight as well. Uh, you said you can also, you can solder the heat exchanger with silver and lead? Probably, but yeah, yeah, it's possible. All right. Yeah. If your boat's running and you look at the exhaust and you like you got uh, sheen water on top of the water, looks like oil. Yeah. Coolers are bad. Remember that you have other cooler equal to this for motor oil. And the diagnosis is the same. I have mm -hmm. the sample of oil, Roberto, yeah. and in the sample I found that too much calcium, too much sodium, is salt, salt water, water mixed with. Yeah. I have in the in the sample in the sample too much nickel is the cooler of oil i have a fuel sample fuel yeah you can take fuel samples and i have a lot of nickel in the fuel sample same problem. the heat exchanger for fuel so all the heat exchanger use the same the same metals same nickel it's exactly the same it's nickel copper so that's like it. you said they're all interchangeable you can use them to cool any right. liquids that you want you just gotta think like let's say a power steering fluid you lose your power steering fluid look in the bilge it's clean you add power steering fluid and you start looking in the back and you just start seeing the sheen in the water yeah what about that engine over there the cats and different heat exchangers that one with the aluminum plates right but it's the same so but instead uh -huh. instead of pipes instead of pipe yeah. You have a 26 or 36 plates uh -huh. with rubber in between each one. You put together and you create that that pad. It's exactly the same with plates. Okay. With plates, with chimps. So on that engine, if you sent out that a sample, it's They still... replace all the chimps. So you get like high aluminum on that because that's aluminum? No, this is a stainless steel. Oh, it's stainless. Okay. You, you, you probably, thank you for that question. You will find a lot of chromium. Okay. A lot of chromium. Those plates are in stainless steel. Uh -huh. And a special stainless steel with high, high level of chromium and nickel. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. And nickel, both of them. Okay? That, that's, that's, that's good. Pay attention, that, that radiator with that amount of plates, <coughs> depending on the amount of plates, is the thickness of the radiator. Oh, depending on the series of the engine, uh, <coughs> there are bigger engines and they need bigger radiators and they add more, more oh, plates. Okay. In other, in other words, they use the same heat exchanger for different models of engines, a small one, medium, big ones, they added more plates. For that reason, they designed that wonderful heat exchanger. <coughs> uh, but that one is for coolant. Yeah. It's yeah. exclusive for coolant. It's not. For oil and fuel, they have other yeah, small ones, traditional one like that. this. Yeah. Right, guys? So, I have two questions. What's the point of having all of these individual pipes? Why can't you just have one hollow tube? Is it, is it like to oh, generate speed area. or pressure? Yes. Or no, because exactly. surface area. Okay. More surface area. Yes. Gotcha. Remember, the coolant is running past in between these as well. Yeah. Gotcha. Correct. Okay. And uh, you have more, more, uh, more surface area, more heat okay. transfer area. And also, like, if only a few of these are clogged up, then you the still got the other ones cool. left. Like for it, like that one right there. Okay. A lot of those look Thank clogged. you. That's a good question. I have a great question. Why <clears throat> those pipes in the bottom are clogged with calcium? You see, so calcium funny. and zinc, zinc, zinc. Why? Because the radiator cap here, located here, look at the look at the zinc. Oh yeah. How is the condition of the zinc? It's destroyed. Is completely Gone. eroded, and what happened with the, those pieces of zinc? Now they're now they're in there and clogged the pipe. Yeah. For that reason, you need replace periodically those those and all clean them out. Yeah. Replace the zinc and and flush flush with pipes with wires those 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 cavities. You gonna anytime you do a service. You're gonna to want to replace all those pencil sinks. A lot of people don't do them. A lot of people don't do them. It's it's really important. A lot important. of people is practically all the technicians. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> and there is a difference between a zinc and an anode. Ah, that's that's different. Can you can you tell to them? Well, the zinc is for salt water. Correct. And they get that magnesium. Water. Correct. And a sacrificial anode is not necessary in zinc. Probably is in magnesium probably is an special aluminum alloy, other alloys, but uh, zinc is exclusive for salt water. In corrosion, mm. we are going to talk about that. Okay. I'm sorry, one more question. What's delta Z? Oh yeah, it's, it's about, I'm going to explain later. Okay. All right. It's clear until this point? Yes, sir. Okay. The majority of the technician, like Danny said, they entered in the boat and they found that the heat exchanger with the, a couple of things here. And uh, they checked the, the service manual and the service manual said, replace the sink. Okay, they removed that sink, replaced for the new one, remove the other one, replace for the other one, and that's it. No, they didn't clean. The recommendation is remove the caps. Oh, if the sink is eroded, oh, look at the, those pipes. Yeah. You need flush, 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 clean, Fresh water, clean, check. Okay, right now it's completely clean. Remove the element if it's possible. In some heat exchangers, it's not possible. Remove the element. The pipes are welded like this, but you you can clean. Back flush it. And flush it. So couldn't that be another cause of, of your coolant being too hot and bubbling if it's not getting any water through? Absolutely. It's of course. So, but wouldn't it be able to overheat? without you having a leak in your coolant? Correct, yes. that's possible. That's, that's why possible. you have to check the whole system. Gotcha. Like, that's possible. like that's also possible. these getting clogged up, if these pieces of impeller break off. Ah, yeah. oh, that's oh, the next yeah, one. Yeah, I'm sure. That's the next I'm one. I'm sure, yeah. Pay attention. I replaced the <laughs> impeller, like Danny said, and I found it that uh, the impeller only have two blades. The <laughs> other five blades are gone. Are gone. gone. <laughs> Where are those pieces of blades? Right there. Look, those are the pieces. Yep. They're gonna go to the heat exchanger yeah, most of the time. Gonna fit or the cooler. Yeah, because of the depending, pressure. That's, depending that's the first strainer that they're gonna bang. get to. Okay. Bang. Yeah, gotcha. because and the temperature, bang. Gotcha. It's hard for those impellers to get through these. Yeah, holes. I didn't know. So, but that's the, I know, but there's other heat exchangers. So I didn't know right. that's the first it's one. Usually the first to. one is the one that gets In the you. first gotcha. one, you found it. Gotcha. In the first one. Gotcha. Normally, the technician said, ah, I don't know what happened. I See. replayed the impeller kit. I cleaned the seat strainer and that engine continued with overheating. Papi, you flush the heat exchanger? 
Oh, I replay the things. You flush the heat exchanger? No, okay. Open the first cup. There it is. <laughs> missing a blade, go find it. Yep. Yeah, no, the blade is in it. one place. So do you ever, do you take the heat exchanger and do you soak it in like some That's kind of a bath or something or you just physically remove that? You don't want to stick it in an acid. You don't, right? No, no don't use plastic or, or not You can use bleach. Bleach you can. What about, don't, can you use like mineral spirits? No, mineral spirits is not for that. No, okay. Bleach, water at high pressure, yeah. brushes, Water high pressure is probably the best, and then you air it with the rest of the air. I, I prefer the pressure washer. Yeah, I was going to say pressure washer. The pressure washer is wonderful. Okay. Yeah, but not like a 4100 PSI. No, no, no. No, 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 I understand. No. Not, not commercial grade. No, no, I understand. No, no, no. no, the pressure washer of the no, marina the to clean the pad no, of the no. boat. No, no, no. No, no the, the pressure washer that you have in your home to clean yeah. the patio. Yeah. That, that's good. That's good for that purpose. Okay, guys. Okay. Ready? The heat exchanger? Yes, sir. Yeah. And about the sinks? Okay, other thing. The majority of the people, when they remove the sink, they say, uh, excuse me, uh, you have Teflon tape to put on the... Uh, <laughs> what happened if you, you put laugh, Teflon tape? The true. Teflon gets oh, in It's going to uh, go into your... Two things, ground. two things. The Teflon goes into the water and clogs the pipe. That's number one. And the second one? You can't take it off? No, it's, no. De it's defeating the purpose yeah, of what it's supposed it's to do. What is the purpose the of the sink? Avoid erosion of this metal and erode the sacrificial anode. If the sacrificial anode is isolated by the Teflon, it's, it's not going to do what it's, it's not going working. Do it's not working. And then he'll tell you, oh, the zinc's still in perfect Oh, it's condition. perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah and it's not doing anything. It's doing nothing. Like uh, the, the, the zinc in the transom. Oh, in my boat, the zinc one year ago is like new. <laughs> just, like I, just like I tell you guys, the little simple things will hurt you more in the long run. Yeah, just yeah. not thinking about stuff like that, you know. Yeah, Put Teflon true. in there, and you know, checking the zincs. Yeah, that's you, something I would think about. If you see about, the zinc that's completely that. gone, you know you got to open it up. I mean, because it doesn't just disappear. It's got to go somewhere. So that's why you have to go check that out. So they should last like a year usually, or no, depend just, on the manufacturer specification. Depends. Check the manual. And it's, depend depend where you're at. I was going to say, depending on what the, con oh, the salt yeah, content like is. If you're in you a marina with some guy. And depend where is the boat. In what type of water, yeah. what type of marina? Yeah, no. depend of too much situation. You need you need common sense. I, w I would tell you like in your cell if you need to do your pencil. I would check probably every three months. Just open it, yeah. look at it, and put it back in. I, it's like a very bad design. It says on it, "Do not remove this unless you take the boat out of the water." <laughs> it's like a, it's on the bottom on the uh, sail drive. Be careful with the manufacturer recommend, uh, the recommendation because in some cases the manufacturer recommendations are commercial recommendations. Yeah. And for, for safety. Yeah, for example, in, in your car, in the majority of your cars, you check the service manual of your car, Honda, Volkswagen, Ford, and they say, transmission, never replace the oil. Can you imagine that magic equipment, fully hydraulic, and you don't need to replace the hydraulic oil? That's stupid. But they got a good price on a new transmission. Of course. For that reason, the majority of the cars in this country should be replaced each 50, six years, seven years, maximum 10 years. When the transmission is done, how much is the price of the car? Not zero. Zero. Well, the metal. And why <laughs> the transmission was destroyed? For no service. Bad fluid. It's the fluid, basically. It's the fluid. OK, in this particular case, it's similar. Some, manu some manufacturers, they say, nothing, don't touch. Oh, I don't touch this. It's, I use it, all right? OK, that's the heat exchanger. For that reason, Roberto, when you receive a phone call related with temperature, you need analyze the situation. Ask to the customer one million of questions. How is the color of the smoke? How is the temperature? Is at a high speed? Is at low? A million of questions in order to identify if the problem is in the coolant side or if the problem is in the raw water side. Because probably the problem is in the raw water side and is easy to solve it. If the problem is in the coolant side, you have more elements to check. Anybody follow me? Look at this. What is the, the raw water side? The raw water side is this, look. 
is it the strainer, the sick cock, the raw water, enter here, the raw water continue over there, the raw water enter in the exhaust pipe and bye bye. This is the salt water path, no more.